I've been noticing this trend myself, but I didn't have the numbers to back it up until Interview Query released their annual report. Growth in data science interviews actually plateaued in 2020 and grew by only 10% after previously growing by 80% year over year for the past few years. Yet, data engineering specific interviews increased by 40% in the past year. That's right, the most underrated data job is data engineering. With rising numbers of job availability and an average salary of 151k, which by the way is higher than the average salary of a data scientist, which is 139k, this is a job that is somehow way under the radar for people looking into data-related jobs. So without further ado, in this video, I'm going to walk you guys through what a data engineer does and why it actually makes perfect sense that companies are aggressively hiring them. And of course, point you towards how to become one. Data engineers often describe themselves as plumbers of the data world. They are responsible for ensuring that raw data is transformed into data that is clean, accessible, scalable, and consistent to allow users to consume the data in an efficient and useful way. Or in a more concise term, ETL. Extract, transform, work. On a less abstract level, if you ever had to go and get your own data and deal with missing values and wrangle it, you will know that it is no small feat. But now imagine that at a huge scale as well. And that is where data engineers come in. Data engineers first need to bring in data from a variety of data sources, which are often in a bunch of different and unintuitive formats. They need to clean it up nicely and write data pipelines to streamline and automate the process, since lots of data is time indexed and you certainly don't want to have to manually do the process of retrieving new data every single day. So you have to write these scripts, which are commonly known as data pipelines, that do the process automatically every day. Then data engineers build tables from this raw data into new tables that are easier for end users to use. The end user often being data scientists such as myself and data analysts or business functions. This is necessary because oftentimes the raw data comes in a form that is not very intuitive or nice to query. For example, if we have say like some data about usage of an app, the information might be spread across a bunch of different tables tables, so such that if you want to get user ID, time of access, maybe what they did on the app and how long they used the app in each session, you would need to go and join together a bunch of tables. Not only is this very annoying to do, it's also very expensive doing all these joins every single time. Well, luckily, in swoops a data engineer and that puts it all into a single table that has clear column names, and that makes your end users, such as myself, very happy. <laughs> If you think the data engineer can then run off, leaving everybody very happy forever, then sadly, you are mistaken. Data engineers can't just be like, bye, after making nice tables for everyone. They also need to continuously monitor their data pipelines to make sure that nothing messes up. In the ideal situation, the data engineer would have thought of all the edge cases, but that is very difficult. And sometimes things just pop up and you just haven't taken it account for. Sometimes it's not even a data engineer's fault because wherever they are sourcing their data from, those people might have just decided to go change the way that the data is organized, which would then cause the data engineer's pipelines to mess up and the tables to mess up. You see, the ETL process is really a living process and it also adapts over time. Finally, in some companies, data engineers are also tasked with building dashboards and metrics for the teams that they work with. I won't go into too much detail about this because the process is just so different depending on the industry, the company, and the team. But I do want to bring this up because I want to further emphasize the fact that data engineers don't work in isolation. Not only do they need to continuously interact with their end users to make sure that the nice tables that they're building from the raw data are actually the ones that end users care about, they're also interacting with many people in the business in making sure that decisions are being driven with data efficiently and effectively. So yep, sorry, if you're a data engineer, you can't just sit in the corner and code by yourself. All right, so this is by no means a comprehensive and in-depth description of what data engineers do, but I do hope I've provided you an overview that gives you a taste for the job and perhaps pique your interest, pique your interest, I don't know, in the role. So now let's briefly dive into why data engineers are so in demand and then go through an overview of the skills you need to become a data engineer. All right, so it actually makes perfect sense why companies are aggressively hiring data engineers with no stopping anytime soon. PLDR, there's just so much data everywhere. Really, there's just so much data that is available from third-party data vendors, and if you work in a product company, from your first-party apps and devices. This along with the increasing belief that everything we should do should be driven by data, leads to huge investments in getting as much data as possible from as many sources as possible. While this is absolutely awesome because being data-driven has shown proven results, the issue is that the data is essentially useless unless it's processed. 
So you know, you have your data scientists that are supposed to go find gems in the data and reveal insights, rebuild models, etc. But data scientists can't do that if the data is not already clean and structured. So we need data engineers to help with the ETL process first. In smaller companies or places that don't use so much data, the data scientist often takes over the job of data engineers. But as more and more data pours in, doing ETL is absolutely a full-time job. And it's a job that is highly valuable. Because here's the thing, if you have a nicely clean data set, you can already extract a lot of low hanging fruit insights, even without doing like fancy models or fancy analyses. But on the other hand, if your data is not clean, it doesn't matter how fancy your models are or how fancy your analyses can be because, well, you just can't do them. And that's why arguably data engineers are more essential than data scientists in the business. All right, I assume that you've, if you've watched until now, you're at least a little bit curious about becoming a data engineer. So now let's talk about the technical skill set and how to become one. Data engineers are primarily expected to know SQL and Python in terms of languages. They are also expected to have a grasp of algorithms and understand how databases work and have some sort of understanding of big data platforms like Spark or Hadoop. Please take what I say here with a grain of salt because just like how data science jobs are extremely variable, so are data engineer jobs. So these are just the core skills sets that are common to most data engineering jobs, and you would have to do your own research into specific data engineering roles at specific companies. How do you get a data engineer job? Just like with data science, sadly, you can't just learn the relevant skills and expect companies to just give you interviews. From my own observation, working with data engineers, data engineering is more similar to software engineering than data sciences. And you get lots of people with software engineering backgrounds going into data engineering. And unlike data science, you don't really get so many business or analyst type backgrounds in data engineering. With that being said, though, I'll also link you guys to this awesome video by Carolina that I came across when doing research for this video. And it goes into far more depth about how to become a data engineer. Plus, she's actually a data engineer. So here you have it, a brief overview of the most underrated data role. I hope this overview was useful and I'll link below all the resources that I came across when researching for this video. All right, see you guys in the next video.